Hey guys, so we're back. We are on the third part of the moments chapter and we're introducing something called equilibrium. So what is equilibrium? Now, I've written a, a few definitions here that will help us to understand what equilibrium actually is. So when a rigid body is in equilibrium, the resultant force in any direction is zero. Now, what do we mean by that? What we mean is that the upwards forces are equal to our downwards forces. So what we're saying there is that in the vertical direction, um, the resultant force is zero because the upwards forces are equal to the downwards forces. It's not winning, it's not going anywhere. And we can also say that horizontally, so um, you know, left and right, um, the, the uh, resultant force is zero as well, which means it's not moving left or right, it's staying completely stationary in the horizontal direction. But for this chapter, I'm only going to leave this here because um, you're not going to see a lot of horizontal forces in this chapter. You're mainly going to see upwards and downwards forces um, acting on rods. So this is the most important thing, right? So maybe just jot this down real quickly on the side of your page. And the second thing uh, about equilibrium is that the resultant moment about any point is zero. So what this means is if a rod is in equilibrium, if you take uh, moments about anywhere, the resultant moment is equal to zero. Now remember what that was from, um, from the last video. What we said is that the resultant moment, you get that from summing all the moments together and then it comes out as zero. Now, we can also interpret this in a slightly different way. What we can say is this. We can just say that if the resultant moment is zero, it must mean that our anti-clockwise moments are equal to are clockwise moments. So that's like uh, a better way to put it. And what I would say is jot that down now. So jot it down just on the side of your page and uh, we'll look at how we can use this uh, when we come to an example. Now, before we get to a couple of examples, um, we need to just look at a few terms here real quickly. So uniform rod. Now, um, you may have seen uniform rod already in the chapter somewhere, but if you haven't, then a, a uniform rod just means that the weight of that rod acts exactly at its midpoint, right? So if you've got a six meter rod, it means its weight acts exactly at three meters. So just remember that. And this is quite important. So when taking moments, always try to take moments from a support if possible. Now, uh, without seeing example, you're going to be like, well, what the hell is this guy on about? But again, maybe jot this down just in the corner and then you'll see uh, exactly why. I've said this after we look at our first example, okay? Now, here's something typical of what you're going to see uh, throughout this chapter. You're gonna see maybe a few rods, you'll see some downwards forces, so maybe that's caused by like, you know, a person standing on that end, maybe a person standing on this end, and you've got this support in the middle of the rod. Now, think about what this support is doing. You've got two forces created by these people, they're pushing downwards, but the support, is pushing the rod upwards, right? And that's why the rod doesn't go just crashing downwards into the ground. So what we need to do is indicate that there's this reaction force, that's what we call it, caused by the support. And we usually give it the letter R. So I'll just put R there just for the moment. We're gonna put a little bit more detail on it in a second uh, when we come to our examples. Now, here's another rod. This time it's on two supports, okay? So this time our downwards forces again may be caused by two people. So it's two stick men there, but we'll have to put two reaction forces in this time. And they're gonna be different, okay? So maybe this one could be called R, I don't know, maybe RA for the time being, and this one RB, but they are going to be different, so we must indicate that, right? RA, RB. So the take home message from this slide is just this. Uh, if there's um, a rod and it's resting on a support, there is always a reaction force at that point, which you must draw in, okay? And that force is just uh, the support pushing up against the rod. Okay, all clear? Good. Now, here's an example. Let's have a quick read of what we've got here. So in the following diagram, a uniform rod AB. Now, if it says there's a uniform rod AB, it means the start of the rod can be labeled as A, the end of the rod can be labeled as B. Pretty simple. Now, they've told us that it is uniform as well. Now, if it's uniform, remember, we just met that definition. If it's uniform, its weight acts directly in the middle, okay? So we'll put that piece of information in. Now, they told us the length of the rod is six meters. So we'll 
Where does the weight act? It must act at three meters. There we go. So um, let's put in some measurements. We've got this here, the whole thing, six meters. Now they gave us the weight of the rod as well. They told us the weight is 40 newtons. So we're going to have 40 newtons coming down at three meters because that's exactly halfway. So I'm going to say this is three meters. Here we go. And um, I'm going to put 40 newtons down here. I'm just going to indicate that that there is three meters. Class. 40 newtons. Okay, brilliant. Uh, now it's resting on two supports at A and C. Now obviously we've got this support which we've already labelled as A, but the other one we need to label as well, right? We should label that as C now, because that's a support at C. And they told us, look at this, A to C is 4 metres. So from A to C is 4 metres. Oh, well, that's great, because that means uh, if A to C is 4 metres, well, you know, here to here is 4 metres. That means that, well, here to here is just 1 metre, right? So there we go, that's, that's great information. Um, and then we can also fill in that then as well, right? Because then that must be two meters because the whole rod is supposed to be six meters. Now, all these measurements are looking a bit busy, right? I mean, it's a bit crazy at the moment. So we should definitely neaten this up. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to get rid of this four meters and I'm going to get rid of this six meters now, right? Because I've got all the other measurements. Um, so we're just going to use those. There we go. So we've got three meters, one meter and two meters. Perfect. Now, uh, they did tell us that there are two supports. So at those two supports, we need to have reaction forces going upwards. So reaction force at A, we can call that one RA, and a reaction force at C. So we'll say RC. Great. This is a brilliant diagram. Now, listen, one thing you should not underestimate is how good your drawings need to be in this chapter. They need to be really, really good, okay? Because it makes answering these questions so much easier. So make sure you take a little bit of time at the start of every single question, make a decent diagram, put all your forces in, all your lengths in, and then you'll get going, okay? Now, the first thing you should do with all of these questions is start with what we said over here for point number one. The resultant force in any direction is zero. And remember what I said on that previous slide was that upwards forces are equal to downwards forces. So that's what we're going to start with. Now, to show that we're looking at upwards and downwards forces, we're going to use this double-headed arrow, which is vertical, okay? So upwards, can you see there's only two forces acting upwards on this rod? We've got RA and RC. So we can say RA plus RC, those are upwards forces, must be equal to downwards forces. So the only downwards force here is this 40 newtons right here. So I'm going to put RA plus RC must be equal to 40. I'm going to put a box around that because that's all we can do with it for now, really. Uh, we'll see if we can do a little bit more with it a bit later. And now we've got to move on to point number two, which is the resultant moment about any point is zero. And remember, what I said is we can interpret that as clockwise moments are equal to anti-clockwise moments. So what we need to do is take moments about somewhere on this rod. But where are we going to take it? So here's what I'm going to do. I'm first of all going to take moments about A. Now what we should do is think about why on earth I'm taking moments about A. What am I doing? Well, because we're taking moments about A, if we look at this force, RA, the reaction force, can you see that because it's at the point we're taking moments, the perpendicular distance is zero, okay? And remember, to work out a moment, what you need to do is the force times by the perpendicular distance. And because that is zero, it means we don't even need to consider this force because zero times RA is zero. So this here is gone. That's why we want to take moments about a support, because it reduces the number of forces that we need to look at. So all we actually need to consider is this force, the 40 newtons, which is the weight of the rod, and RC, which is the uh, upwards, the, the reaction force that supports C. So let's do this now. Let's say we're looking at moments around A. So I'm just going to write that moments about A. And as I said, clockwise are equal to anti-clockwise. Now hopefully you can see that the 40 newtons is going to be creating a clockwise moment. So to work out uh, the moment created by that 40 newtons, the perpendicular distance is 3 meters as we can see, and the force is 40 newtons. So clockwise, all we've got is, I'm going to put it clockwise, so we've got um, 40 times by 3 for clockwise. 
And we said clockwise has to equal anti-clockwise. So on the other side, what I'm going to do is just work out my anti-clockwise moment. And that's going to be created by RC. Now, the total distance um, that RC is from our pivot point is four meters, right? Three meters to here, an extra meter, four meters altogether. So that's going to be RC times four. So now we've got 120 is equal to four RC. And that means RC is just going to equal 30. Great. Now, what can we do with this? Well, the fact that we've got RC is equal to 30, we can do some substitution. Plug it into there, and then we get what RA is as well. So um, if I just change color real quickly, we'll go with RA plus. Now, instead of RC, we're going to put 30 is equal to 40, and that clearly means that RA is going to equal 10. So our job was to calculate the magnitude of the reactions at each force, uh, sorry, at each support. So at RA, we've got um, a reaction force of 10 newtons. And at C, we've got a reaction force of 30 newtons. And there we go, we've got it. So nice and simple. Now let's think about this. Remember I said that I wanted to take moments about A because it gets rid of a force. Now let's look at what would happen if I didn't take moments about A. So let's just say I scrapped this idea, we didn't even do this. Let's forget that. Uh, and let's even forget this as well. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna make life a bit difficult. And I'm gonna take moments about B. So look where B is. B is right the way on the end here. So let me just get rid of that. So there was B, right? So now that's gonna be my pivot point. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a slightly larger like black dot there to show that that's where I'm taking moments about. Now, if I'm taking moments about here, have a, have a look and think about how many moments that will, uh, will be created. There'll be a moment here because of RC, because there is a perpendicular distance um, from this pivot point to RC. We'll also need to consider this 40 newtons as well because there's a, you know, a distance to get to here too. And there's also a perpendicular distance to get to RA. So at this time, we need to consider three different forces. So a little bit more work. Now, RA and RC will be going clockwise. And um, this 40 newtons will be going anti-clockwise. So here's what I'm going to do. Let's set out clockwise is equal to anti-clockwise again. And now clockwise, remember we said the clockwise uh, moments are going to be caused by RC and RA. So for RC, this perpendicular distance is two meters. So it's two meters times by RC. So we're going to have, I'm just going to say two RC plus RA. Now the total distance from there to the end is going to be six meters. So it's going to be six times by RA. So we'll go six RA is equal to the anti-clockwise moments. Now anti-clockwise is only going to be this 40 newtons here, and that's three meters away from B. So that's going to be three times 40. So what we've got is two RC plus six RA is equal to 120. We can divide everything there by two. So maybe you can go six, uh, sorry, just uh, RC plus three RA is equal to 60. Now have a think about what we're going to need to do to actually work out what RC and RA is. Can you see that what we've got is this equation at the top with both RC and RA, and this one here with also RC and RA. So hopefully you can tell what we're going to need to do now is a simultaneous equation. So definitely more work than what we did over here when we just took moments about A, because we got rid of RA, so it was not going to lead to a simultaneous equation, okay? So moral of the story is this, make sure if you can, to take moments about a support because it's going to get rid of the reaction force at that point, okay? Because the perpendicular distance is zero. So make sure you remember that. Now, let's just quickly follow this through um, just to show you that it does actually work. So we've got RC and 3RA is 60. What I'm going to do is we're going to use this equation here as well. Um, and let's write that underneath here. I'm going to put RC plus RA is also equal to 40. And I'm just going to subtract these equations. So what we can see is 2RA is going to equal 20. And so RA is equal to 10. 
And we had that obviously in our first um, piece of working as we've got up there. There we go, R A is equal to 10. And then obviously if we sub that back into one of these, we're gonna get RC is equal to 30, okay? Hopefully that's understood and let's move on. Now it's time for you to have a go. Here's a practice question. Very, very similar to what we did, just the supports are shifted to the other side. So uh, we'll pause the video here. You have a go at this and we'll catch up in a few minutes. Okay, time to review. So um, what have we got? We've got uniform run again, A, B. So hopefully you filled in A at the start, B at the end. Um, and it's uniform, the length is 10 meters. So initially we can say the total distance there is 10 meters. Uh, it's got a weight of 60 Newtons, so exactly halfway, bang, we've got that there at 60 Newtons. And so what that means is from here to here, must be 5 meters, because it's halfway. Uh, they told you A to C, okay, so there's two supports, so we've got one at C, one at B, so this must be C. And A to C is 3 meters, and so that means that must be 2 meters, right? Because in total, that there, that distance is 5 meters. Um, and now what I'm going to do is get rid of that because that's just making our diagram a bit messy. So we'll get rid of that. And likewise, if that's five meters, then this must be five meters as well. So we might as well fill in the five meters there and then completely get rid of this 10 meters down here. There we go. So this simplifies our drawing. Uh, it looks a lot better now. Um, the last thing we should do is fill in our two uh, reaction forces, RB and RC. There we go. So hopefully that's what you got to begin with, a uh, nice little diagram. And then the first thing we need to do is consider upwards and downwards forces, and they've got to be equal to each other, as we said earlier. So RC plus RB should be equal to 60. We've got that there. And then we've got to take moments about somewhere. So I'm going to take moments about C. Remember what we said earlier, take it about a support if possible. So here. And what we then said is clockwise moments are equal to anti-clockwise. So let's just write that out there. Clockwise equals anti-clockwise. And so clockwise, um, we're going to have a moment created by the 60 newtons in the clockwise direction. That's going to be 60 times by 2. And then for the anti-clockwise direction, uh, we're going to have a moment created by RB. And that's 7 meters away. So that's going to be 7 RB. So that's 120 equals 7 RB. RB equals 120 over 7. And now we can do some substitution to find what RC is. So just take it and plug it back into the very first equation that you got. So you got RC is equal, oh sorry, RC plus 120 over 7 equals 60. Subtract the 120 over 7 to the other side, and that will give you RC equals 300 over 7. Put Newtons on there, Newtons on here. And there we go. So hopefully, that's what you've got um, for your two reaction forces. <laughs> well done. Good. Congratulations. Really good. Um, now, that there is a very, very brief introduction to um, equilibrium, and, and that's like the easiest sort of question you're gonna see uh, in this topic. So in the next video, we're gonna step up the difficulty, make it a bit more challenging, okay? So I'll see you there.